Welcome to Queer News Tonight, the world's first and only LGBTQ plus daily evening news show. Tonight, we present a very special transgender takeover of Queer News Tonight. The L, G, B, and Q of the community are very important, but tonight it's all about the T. So it's time to queer up the news. It is 8 p.m. Monday, January 17th, 2022, and we are literally out of the closet and into the headlines. So many of your important stories we are going to tell tonight on Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first live daily LGBTQ evening news show, literally out of the closet and into the headlines on Queer News Tonight with Al Ferguson. Thank you for joining Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first and only unedited live LGBTQ plus evening news show. Whatever happens, you will see it. Queer News Tonight is supported by viewers like you. We are part of a partnership between Happening Out Television Network and Hot Spots Magazine. Hot Spots is celebrating 36 years of the LGBTQ plus experience. We bring you the best of LGBTQ plus news, entertainment, and support of our community. I'm your anchor, Misty Eyes, tonight at Queer News Tonight. Let's now welcome anchor Raji Narayan Singh, a famous transgender activist, actress, author, mystic, and reality TV personality. She is of multiracial descent, and she has appeared on more than 35 television shows across our globe. Please help me welcome Raji. <laughs> Thank you, Misty. It's great to be here. Let's welcome host Tobias Packer. Tobias is communication director for SEIU, Service Employees International Union, and is co-founder of the Trans Collaborative Network. As a proud South Florida native and transgender man, Tobias harnesses the transformative power of storytelling to change hearts and minds. Welcome, Tobias. I feel very welcome. Thank you, Raji. <laughs> Now let's welcome anchor Carvel Estriplet, founder of Carvel Bikes, the only LGBTQ plus bicycle business in Wilton Manors. She is located in the Wilton Collective Building on the drive. She is a proud, unapologetic black trans woman and a member of the Wilton Manors Community Affairs Advisory Board. She also serves as deputy director for the, De for the Florida Democratic LGBTQ plus caucus. Good evening, Carvel. Thank you, I'm happy to be here. We are the reporters for Queer News Tonight, and this evening we begin with the queer headlines. The LGBTQ plus community in South Florida and across America is diverse. Our community across the world is vast, and here we are the bullet points for the queer news for today, Monday, January 17th. Queering up entertainment. LGBTQ plus community celebrates as Amy Schneider now has the third longest Jeopardy winning streak. Trans Jeopardy contestant Amy Schneider continued her winning streak this evening and made history yet again as her 34th win broke the record of 32 wins for the third longest winning streak on the game. The number third spot has previously been held by James Holshire, who holds the top 10 records for most money won on a single game and also holds the record for single highest total winnings. Schneider, who is already the only woman to win more than a million dollars on Jeopardy, increased her total winnings to one million one hundred and forty-eight thousand. Sorry, one million one hundred forty-eight thousand six hundred dollars. She is currently in fourth place, based on highest winning streaks during regular season play. Behind her, only Jennings, Holshower, and Amadio. Talk about trans fabulous. Oh my God. Yes, yes. And you know, I know there's, there, there's been some haters out there, but I, she is just like so intelligent. And it's amazing how she goes from one topic to another, like within seconds, her mind can just, she's brilliant. She's brilliant. I mean, I hope she does good with that money too. <laughs> Girl, spit out. <laughs> Get surgery, get something fun. <laughs> I think it's exciting. I hope she actually gets the record and beats Ken Jennings. And it just kind of proves this, you know, the stereotype that all trans women, we're, hey, we're unicorns. We're that talented. Fact, yeah. We're yeah. talented. Yeah. And it's great to see this. 
Did you know trans people are smart too? Yeah, oh. Hello. Oh, hello. Oh, yeah. Hello. hello. Visit visibility yeah. gives us power. Yes, visibility right. gives it us does. strength. And I am super yeah. proud to see one of us on TV. She's the second trans person to win Jeopardy, but the first to break a million dollars. I say yeah. go, sister. Go, sister. Yes. yes. Oh, oh, it's me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Querying up politics. MLK Day. His fight for equality changed the way LGBTQ Americans protest. As one of the giants of the civil rights movement, Martin Luther King Jr. rose to worldwide prominence for his demand for equality for all people through nonviolence in religion. Fusing religion and fellowship, black churches were easily message systems to disperse news, information, political protests. Many African Americans attended services and could also brainstorm and information meetings about protesting. Many protesters of the Montgomery bus boycott were members of the church networks. Through King, assassinated in 1968, his legacy is still prominent today. The fight for equality is the same way that martyrized Du Bois message. King's method of mobilizing through the church network is now developed into social media outreach. Ah. I, some things some things don't change. We're still fighting voting rights. 50 years later, voting rights are being assaulted here in this state and throughout the country. So That's so true. I mean, the fight continues, I think, yeah. for equity and, and equality. But on this, you know, during this time, I should say, uh, of celebrating Martin Luther King. I just can't help to be so thankful. I feel so much gratitude to him for his activism and yeah. him and the people that rallied around him because it was a whole movement and he happened to be the face of the movement. And so I, I'll just say this, I think he's allowed me to be able to have dreams mm -hmm. and possibly fulfill my dreams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's hard to think about him uh, without thinking about folks like Bayard Rustin as well. Uh, yeah. An openly gay yeah. black man who really helped to lead the civil rights movement. Um, and, you know, as the world takes a moment to think about his MLK's legacy, I just I also want to think about some of the queer people who are, who are around him who really helped yeah. make some of these things happen. It is a blessing to have a person that led by example and showed us how to be. It's easy to give good advice, but it's yeah. hard to be a good example and walk the walk and talk the talk. Yeah. I have the blessing of having the same birthday as him. We were both born January 15th, not the same year. <laughs> and I always say he has a dream and I have a fantasy. And my fantasy lines up very much with his. I believe that we can be a part of a world that is beautiful and accepting of all people. And yes, the world is gonna hate us because we're too fat, because we're too tall, because we're black, because we're Asian, because we're transgender. But one thing I wanna remind you is a quote from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And I remind you, when you are attacked and when you are made fun of, you cannot stoop to their level. You have to give them love and you have to give them light. Otherwise it becomes a vicious spiral. Wow. Powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Queer up trans rights. Amazon bans book on transgenderism. For three years, Amazon sold Ryan Anderson's book, quote, when Harry became Sally, responding to the transgender moment. Then, last February, the book disappeared from Amazon's virtual shelves. Anderson, president of the Ethics and Public Policy Center, a conservative research institute, first learned his book was being censored when he received a m message from someone who wanted to buy the book but could not find it on Amazon. The company said they removed the book because, quote, we have chosen not to sell books that frame LGBTQ plus identity as a mental illness. Anderson explained the, <clears throat> why he felt the book didn't do that, saying, quote, when Harry Became Sally details the topic of gender dysphoria, though it doesn't discuss it in the context of a mental illness, end quote. He said such language is stigmatizing. Anderson describes gender dysphoria as a, quote, deep discomfort <clears throat> that someone would feel as a result of biological sex that doesn't align up with their gender identity. Watch this. And I actually now think we're at a, a point in time in which that it doesn't matter 
you know, how rigorous your argument is, how charitable your rhetoric is, if you just have certain convictions that run afoul of the left on certain, you know, hot button third rail issues, you know, they'll do whatever they can get away with to silence you. In 2018, Ryan Anderson's book, When Harry Became Sally, was published. The book, which examined gender dysphoria and transgenderism, was a bestseller on the Washington Post list of DC bestsellers. But in 2021, the book disappeared from Amazon. It was February of this year, and I was at my niece's uh, birthday party. While we were there, uh, sitting down, pull up my smartphone, look at the phone. Someone had reached out saying, hey, I want to buy your book and I can't find it. And so I just figured, yeah, you must be using the wrong title. So I pull up my uh, uh, Amazon app and the hardback is gone, the paperback edition's gone, the Kindle's gone, the audiobook's gone, even the used copies. Like, you know, I text uh, my book agent and I say, did someone forget to like renew the listing with Amazon? And, you know, and then we email the publisher. So they then reach out um, to Amazon. Amazon says, well, it violates our content policy. And of course, like that makes us scratch our heads because they were selling the book for three years at this point. Big tech censorship is not new. Twitter and Facebook censor Republican members of Congress at a rate of 53 to one compared to Democrats. Just in the past minute, Twitter has announced it is cutting off President Trump's ability to post on the social media site. Facebook under fire for trying to silence law enforcement. I'll just cut to the chase. Big tech's out to get conservatives. Amazon, which controls 72% of adult new book sales online, according to the Wall Street Journal, was not known for being a big tech company that censored. In fact, Amazon still has Mein Kampf for sale on its website. There were four senators who sent a letter to Amazon asking you know, a series of questions about why they did this. The Republican Study Committee also sent a letter to Amazon asking why the book was being censored. Amazon Vice President for Public Policy Brian Huseman responded to the senators in a letter writing, we have chosen not to sell books that frame LGBTQ plus identity as a mental illness. The book doesn't do that. It discusses gender dysphoria, though uh, it doesn't discuss it in the context of, uh, of, of a mental illness. But I had avoid using the language that they accused me of, because that's stigmatizing, it's, it, it belittles people, it marginalizes people. What finally convinced me, like, just like utterly, like a book like this was needed, um, was I had encountered people who had transitioned and then detransitioned. Um, and, you know, the first, you know, person I ever met like this was a 70 something year old man who had transitioned in his 50s, lived, I think, eight years, you know, identifying as a woman, and then detransitioned. And, you know, his story is tragic. And then I started um, reading testimony and watching YouTube videos of people who transitioned in their teens and then in their 20s regretted it. And those stories were like just utterly heartbreaking. I mean, like you, you're watching them and you're tearing up. And then I just said, if I don't write this book, who will? I ended up reading thousands of pages about the biology, the science, the medicine, the psychology, the psychiatry, the philosophy, the law. Um, I was like, each one of those issues can become a chapter of the book. Um, so I had like piles and piles of, you know, PDF files that I had printed out, journal articles. I, I mean, I even bought some endocrinology textbooks. Gender, gender dysphoria is kind of like the deep discomfort that someone would feel as a result of a biological sex that doesn't uh, line up with their gender identity. The analogy that I draw in the book is to anorexia, right? And just as uh, I think a high school girl who has anorexia, the problem is not with her body, so you're not gonna prescribe her liposuction, though it is a problem, right? There is kind of a, 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 a self-image issue or an eating control issue, like whatever, it might be different underlying causes. Uh, and so you wanna treat it. It's a real condition. Um, the treatment's not gonna be with the body. The treatment's gonna be with the mind, the emotions, the thoughts, the feelings, et cetera, et cetera. That was my point with gender dysphoria, with people who think they're trapped in the wrong body. The problem's not with their body. The problem is with thoughts, with feelings, with emotions. And so even if you disagree with me, you should be concerned. If a social media company can choke the dissemination of a newspaper's reach, if a uh, the world's largest 
e-commerce online site. It's, it's the largest retailer in the world is a choke point, And we should be concerned about that. You wouldn't want to be experiencing gender dysphoria, but if you were experiencing it, you would want someone to be giving you kind of like authentic, compassionate guidance. And compassion detached from truth isn't authentic, right? It's a phony form of compassion where you just say what people want to hear. Uh, I can't roll my eyes hard enough at this. <laughs> Who's, who's going to pop off first? Oh, uh, well, here's what I have to say. Uh, whether he believes he's, he's violating the terms or not, he is. And Amazon is a private entity that's not a government-run entity. And they can choose what books they want to sell and what books they don't want to sell. And honestly, good for them, because this schlock uh, does nothing but <laughs> How do you say that community. in English? <laughs> What's schlock? Yeah, we well, garbage. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I think it's 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 kind of like I'm on the fence in the sense of um, the whole thing about freedom of speech and a person being able to express their opinions, et cetera, et cetera. But on the flip side, it's it it's so funny to me, and not funny, but funny as an expression, that he he, he tries to come off like, oh well. I'm not using mental illness in the book, you know, I'm not saying, you know, because that's like belittling um, the community and, and, and stigmatizing the community. But, but then he's saying, because he compared it to transgenderism or being transgender to anorexia, he's saying that it's a mental, well, it's a mental thing, we don't have to change our bodies. Yeah. We need to fix our minds. And so he's actually going against yeah. what, what we as a community have been fighting for for such it, a long time. It's another example of someone who is not trans trying to define who trans people are and speak for us, right? And he has no right doing that. And Amazon said, well, no. I think, yeah, give him the boot. <laughs> give him the boot. He's a it's, hack. He's yeah, a I, hack. And yeah. Uh, I mean, I totally agree. I mean, he's, I mean, he's, He's, he's a source of misinformation, kind of, pretty much. But the other thing I got from the story was the, the senators who were on that bill, these are the same guys who were saying, oh, I'm being censored, being censored, and they're shameless. I, I, I'm sorry, today I'm in a political... <laughs> <laughs> like, well, you are a political so, individual. Yeah, so, but I got that. That's the other part of the story I got from I, it. That and was. I think Amazon's just trying to do the, the right, right thing, thing for trans people. Well, I was going to say yeah. that, that, that false sense of persecution that we always mm. see coming yeah. from the right. And exactly. that story where they said, oh, the left is coming from us. And all of those senators who signed those letters are the folks who haven't signed the Equality Act, constantly talk about um, how, uh, just say horrible things about our community. And they're standing up in this instance. And did you notice, did you notice that he talked about the stories of people that had detransitioned and how point tragic, point. and I think yeah. that was his whole underlying. Thought. Yes, exactly. For the book. I mean, percentage wise, I don't even know what the percentage is of trans people that detransition, so but I think it's a very small percentage, you know, and he was using that. Again, these are all the same props. <laughs> props. Yeah. These are the yeah. like, these are the same straw men that pe folks use against our community to deny us rights, to, de to deny us yeah. access, to deny us citizenship. So piss off. So when I first saw this topic, I was very conflicted on my thoughts and views. First, I want to talk about censorship and how you should not be. However. Then I started to look in further. I Googled this on audible.com. I Googled this on amazon.com. And what popped up was the transgender hatred books, like the one we talked about on the show, Irreversible Damage, the transgender craze seducing our daughters and making our daughters men. Then I realized this was a transgender book about trans people written by a cisgender male. Hello. Hello, red flag. That is not wise. Nothing about us without us. And then comparing us to anorexic people where the tr problem is not our body, it's in our minds. That is definitely wrong. All trans people, every single one of us has something called gender dysphoria. Some of our dysphoria is in our face. Some of our gender dysphoria is in our chest. Some of our gender dysphoria is only here. But no matter where our gender dysphoria is, it's body related. And when we look in the mirror, we are very triggered by what we see. Imagine going to the bathroom and hitting yourself every time you use the bathroom because your body is wrong. 
That okay. is definitely body related and that is definitely a severe form of gender dysphoria. I am super glad that this book was taken off Amazon. Queering up trans rights. Jacksonville black trans woman, Deval Princess, shot and killed. Deval Princess, a 24-year-old black trans woman from Jacksonville, Florida, was found shot and dead in her car at a shopping center on January 2nd. She is the second known tr trans non-binary or gender non-conforming victim uh, fatally of fatal violence in the U.S. this year. The popular hairstylist has been in the early stages of her transition and identify as trans. According to her family, the human rights campaign <coughs> reported her body was found inside a car at the shopping center after authorities received a call from the secu security guard at the center. Had found a body, uh, found a person unresponsive according to the First Coast News, which they misgendered um, Princess. The security cam footage shows a person waiting at the shopping center as Princess pulls her car up. The person then drive, goes into the driver's side, then to the passenger side, then back to the driver's side, then finally goes back to the passenger side and gets Princess in Princess' car. TV station WJAX, which also misgendered uh, Princess as well, so reported that a flash has been seen in the footage and the person leaving the vehicle and fleeing. Watch this. Emotional cries for justice as family members of Tevin Robinson plead for answers. I just want justice for my son. He didn't he did deserve it. The 24-year-old was found unresponsive in a car at the Highland Square Shopping Center and police suspect foul play. Multiple sources and family members tell me that he was shot. When I heard the term shot immediately in my head, I took it as my cousin was gunned down. Robinson was a well-known hairstylist specializing in wigs and weaves. Family members like his cousin Ronika Wells and his aunt Rachel Campbell also tell me he was openly gay and heavily involved in the LGBTQ community. He was loved. He's truly missed. He was our little firefly. It's, I don't know, I'm lost for words. It's we're already just, just three weeks in the new year and two of our sisters are gone and it's mm. it's enough i mean it's numbing to hear the story and then it's the insult the injury you see the reporting right there on that footage where the relative is misgendering her and even the reporting showing her dead name so sad. yeah sad. it really is sad and you know i mean not to sound self-centered, but every time I hear of a transgender murder, it's like a reality check for me because I think, God, that could have been me. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, it's, it's scary. And, you know, another life lost, and it's just really sad. And the whole thing about, you know, the misgendering, it's obvious her family hadn't accepted her transness yet. Um, but, you know, I, you would have thought the media would have tried to get it right, you know? I have nothing else to say other than I'm sorry. And, and, you know, it hurts. It hurts. Yeah. It hurt. always lose to me. A member of our community was brutally, violently attacked and killed. It is January 17th, and two of our trans siblings have been murdered already this year. Last year, 2021, 51 hate crimes against trans people happened. There's only two, 52 weeks in a year. That's crazy high. That is crazy problematic. America, we need to do better. Amen. Queer Up Politics. 11-year-old kid of the year takes on lawmakers in fight for trans rights. Kai Shapley didn't feel scared when she sat before the Texas Senate Committee in April 2021, wearing a flowing yellow blouse, floral skirt, and cowboy boots. The then fourth grader calmly introduced herself. She told the committee, I love ballet, math, 
science, and geology. I spend my free time with my cats, chickens, FaceTiming with my friends, and dreaming of when I finally can get to meet Dolly Parton. I do not like spending my free time asking adults to make good choices. Shapely urge lawmakers to vote against Senate bills 1311 and 1646, which ban doctors from providing gender affirming treatment to transgender kids like herself. One of the bills even went as far as to define the treatment as child abuse. Both bills ultimately failed. She scolded the committee saying, it makes me sad that some politician used trans kids like me to get votes from people who hate me just because I exist. God made me, God loves me for who I am, and God does not make mistakes. Mm. Oh my God. Talk about, I tell you, out of the mouth of babes. I mean, and you know, I, what I notice with people, um, with the world, people have a tendency to kind of open up their hearts when it's coming from a child. Mm -hmm. So she has some power there. Just the fact that she's a child and she's brave enough to go and speak in front of the, you know, these people and really speak from her soul. I mean, I'm, I'm just so proud of her. I can't think of being 11 <laughs> and having the, you know, the gumption to do that. And heck, girl, when you meet Dolly Parton, I want to be there. <laughs> I love Dolly <laughs> yeah. Parton. <laughs> I was thinking the same yeah. thing. <laughs> Who doesn't love Dolly? Who doesn't? Um, I, I love this story. Hey, she, she loves math. She loves cats. She, say, she sounds like me. And, and, um, it's inspiring. And like you said, Raji, it's when a child stands up and knows where they're coming from and knows what they're... It's inspiring. That's, I have to say, I love this story. I, I just can't wait to see what she's going to do yes. in the future. I mean, if yeah. she's th this dynamic now, can you imagine what she's going to do? Wow. One of my cousins just came down here for my birthday from Anchorage, Alaska to visit me. And she was sharing stories of her 11-year-old daughter. And I was like, since when do 11-year-olds become adults? Here is another example yeah. of an 11-year-old adult. Yes. This little girl is spitting wisdom and knowledge on people when she should be climbing jungle gyms. And it's sad that she has to defend herself at such levels. But I agree with her, and I want to quote the Bible for you. Jeremiah 1.5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart and made you special. God does not make mistakes. She was born that way with power, with purpose, and with intention. She became transgender between the second and third trimester while she was in the womb. God made her that way. Thankfully, that 11-year-old girl also had the courage to live authentically and be who she was, even though people hate her because she exists. And that should not be a world our children are raised in. Ah. Oh. Misty, amen. That's so powerful. Next, we report on our partnership with Sunshine Cathedral, the world's largest queer church here in Fort Lauderdale. We are broadcasting from our permanent set here at Sunshine and supporting that partnership. Happening Out Television Network broadcasts the largest LGBTQ plus religious live broadcast in the world as more than 30,000 watch every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern. Watch this. Taisha Best, your queer community servant, and Sunshine Cathedral is my queer church. We finish tonight's queer news headlines with what we call LGBTQ Flash News. LGBTQ Flash News. Florida gay rights activist found dead in landfill, prompting homicide probe. 
George Diaz Johnston, a gay rights activist whose participation in the 2014 legal fight that led to landmark same-sex marriage victory in Florida, has been found dead. His death has been ruled a homicide, police said. Diaz Johnson, 54 years old, had not been seen since January 3rd, when his body was found at a Jackson County landfill on January 8th roughly 90 miles west of where he was last seen in Tallahassee, authorities said. The trash had initially been collected from another landfill nearby, which is accessible to the public, according to the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office, which said an autopsy will determine the cause of death. Diaz Johnson, whose brother is Manny Diaz, the chair of the Florida Democratic Party and the former mayor of Miami, had been living in Tallahassee at the time of his disappearance. This is another tragic story that we have to report on tonight. Oh, oh, may his memory being a blessing. Yeah, I, you know, I, I'm curious to find out what kind of um, results are going to happen from the investigation. Um, and being that his brother is who his brother is, I think the police will be on it. Yeah, it's definitely tragic. It's... And like you just mentioned, it's, it's high profile, but um, again, it's, this year has been rough for our community. So. Yeah, God bless the family. LGBTQ flash news. World Watch. Cops make transgender strip to prove gender. Watch this. Kai Shapley, introduce yourself and give us your testimony. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Kai. Now to a shocking case from Tripura where the police has been under the scammer for allegedly high-handedness against journalists and activists in uh, once again facing serious allegations and this time from the transgender community. Days after Tripura police detained four transgender individuals on their way back from the city from a party at a city-based hotel, the community now alleged those arrested were stripped inside the police station in order to prove their gender. They were also allegedly forced to submit a written undertaking saying that they would not cross-dress ever again and threaten to arrest if they did so. Four transgender women were arrested by police and forced to strip to prove their gender by police in Algartala, India. They were also made to write an undertaking that they will never cross-dress, and if they are found in such attire anywhere in the city, they could be arrested. One of the women filed a complaint after they were released. In the complaint, she stated, in the police station, we were asked by the police to open our clothes and disclose our gender. The most embarrassing thing was that the police kept our wigs and inner garments in the police station. The four LGBTQ, sorry, the four LGBT community members claimed that their rights to privacy had been violated as well as those provided by Section 377 of National Legal Services Authority Judgment of the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court had in its judgment declared transgender people as the third gender, affirmed that fundamental rights granted under the Constitution will be equal, equally, equally, sorry, act, act applicable, sorry, but I'm, I'm getting tongue-tied, equally applicable to them and gave them the right to self-identify of their gender as male, female, or the third gender. Wow. Well, you know, a lot of parts of India, the Hizra is, um, you know, is looked on as special and like a a holy type of thing. So it's obvious that it's not all through India. So hopefully they'll they'll continue fighting. Yeah, that that's my impression too. I thought like certain parts of India, you know, the Asia and things that I respect, but it's it's, it's horrible to hear that that I know. Yeah. Two steps forward, one step back. Oh. And even in America, we are totally divided. In India, they allow third sex on your passports, your IDs, your gender markers. And like Raji said, the Hidras are worshipped. They're two spirits. They're considered walking gods on earth. And yet, in some parts of our country and in some parts of the United States, we're not safe either. Just goes to show you can't trust government, you can't trust the cops. 
sorry. <laughs> it's situation. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> LGBTQ plus flash news. Glad reports greater LGBTQ visibility has increased harassment of trans and LGBT community. As the LGBT community continues to expand and become more visible, the 2021 Accelerating Acceptance Study takes a deeper look at non-LGBTQ Americans' familiarity, comfortability, and understanding of the LGBTQ experience. This year, the Accelerating Acceptance Study found that the non-LGBTQ Americans are becoming more understanding that the LGBT community is not just one homogenous group, but rather a diverse community of various identities across gender and sexuality. Additionally, the findings show that non-LGBTQ Americans are becoming increasingly aware that there are more than two genders, with many polled also understanding that transgender and non-binary people will continue to be a more visible and familiar part of life. An alarming result from the poll shows that LGBTQ people say that they've experienced discrimination at higher levels in 2021 than last year, with six in 10 LGBTQ respondents reporting that discrimination based on sexual orientation and or gender identity. During a year when state legislatures across the US introduced unprecedented number of anti-LGBTQ bills, many targeting the trans community, the importance of passing the Equality Act has never been more critical. It's never been more critical. Look, the more visible we become, the more outspoken we become, the louder our voices are, the harder the pushback is. But you know what? Unfortunately, uh, the, f uh, the fact that so many of our people in our community experience some of the worst uh, types of violence and discrimination, uh, we still have to keep fighting. Because if we shrink away, if we take a step back, they're going to take everything that we've gotten. Yeah. Uh, for me, the word double-edged sword comes to mind. Um, you know, as an activist, I know how important visibility is. Uh, but, you know, d you know, with the more visibility, we're going to have situations like this. Yeah, it's... It's like you just said too, like we, we put ourselves out there and we're tr trying to be as vocal and things that it makes us the biggest target. And unfortunately it's, like you said, that's like you said, double edged sword of being yeah. that way, being both this way, so. It reminds me a lot of the civil war. Yes, our visibility gives us power. Yes, our visibility gives us strength, but did racism end with the civil war? No, instead of ending racism, it made people very angry and lynch mobs continued, and the racism still continues. Yes, visibility gives us strength, and visibility gives us power, but that doesn't mean all people are gonna change their way. We have lived in a systemically racist country, and judgment and bias are taught down by people that love us and want to protect us, and we trust them, and we believe them. Doesn't mean they're right. <laughs> LGBTQ plus flash news. GOP government ad attacks trans athletes last month the transgender uh, law center recommend abandoning transgender sports equality debates as they had been found to be too easy for conservatives to win a perfect example of this is a new political ad released by south dakota governor christy Nome last week the ad doesn't actually use the word trans or transgender instead Nome, like countless shameless politicians across the country trying to say that she is just protecting female sports State lawmakers, particularly Republicans, have seized on trans people as a white hot culture war issue. Last year, legislators in 34 states introduced 147 anti-trans bill. According to the Human Rights Campaign, at least 10 states end up enacting bills that target the trans athletes, despite the fact that not even a lawmaker infrequently can't even find a local example of trans girls in a particular target of these bills even playing the sport. Manufacture outrage. That's all they have. They, they don't have real issues to talk about. They can't talk about the economy. They can't talk about COVID. They just want to target our community because they're desperate. This story makes a huge pit in my stomach and I actually want to get sick. Tonight we reported on so many stories about how the world hates trans people. And if you've seen this ad, it is brilliantly done. It is cleverly done. It is beautifully done. And unfortunately, these biased, racist men and women are going to vote for her because of the fear and stigma that this ad portrays. And it's disgusting. I mean, 
tails all this time. They use what is the unfamiliar, and it's interesting because America is more familiar with us than they've ever been, but they don't really know us. And, and I say that in a, in a way of, look, not enough Americans actually interact with a transgender person or that they know they interact yeah, with a transgender person on true. a day-to-day -day basis. And the best way for us to combat these things is for us to be outspoken about what people we are. Uh, looking back at the story that we reported on earlier with Kai, the 11-year-old who stood up to the Texas legislature, she said, I spend my time FaceTiming chicken, uh, FaceTiming chickens, FaceTiming her <laughs> friends and playing <laughs> with her chickens. Chicken. <laughs> and she doesn't want to spend her time telling grown-ups to make good or better decisions. Hey, grown-ups, make better decisions. We're people. We're people in your neighborhood, and we deserve dignity and respect. Yeah. I mean... All, all I can really say is like, here we go again. It's like, yeah. you know, after this all this newscast, I'm thinking, my God, we're getting it front, left, right, center, all you know, all around, and um, I'm getting tired, y'all. <laughs> but, but anyway, <laughs> anyway, we got to just get back. On keep, on keep, keep on going. Keep on going. I mean, yeah. look, it's Martin Luther King Day, right? Yeah, and you know, he is a paragon of teaching us how to keep going and in nonviolence and in love and we've just got to continue amen to amen, amen. Yeah. okay so that is today's news for the lgbtq plus community on the world's first and only daily lgbtq plus evening news show is our community important to you then help us by liking and subscribing ring the bell for updates share this news with your friends and family post this broadcast in many groups that you're a member of Tonight's stories are about our community and deserve the attention that your family and friends. Queer News Tonight is the only live LGBTQ plus digital television show in the world that is out of the closet and into the headlines. We need your support. If our community is to grow, we must tell our stories and bring them to the attention of the broader world. This is the only place in the world that tells these LGBTQ plus stories in motion and sound. That is the passion of Happening Out Television Network and Queer News Tonight. I'm your anchor, Misty Eyes, and on behalf of these LGBTQ plus reporters, the anchors of Queer News Tonight, including Tobias Packer, Rahindra Narayan Singh, and Carvel Estreplet, we will see you daily at 8 p.m. But before we end the show, we do have one final story. Queering Up South Florida. A special interview with Jeff Olivero and Jameer Baptiste from My Hollywood Pride. This Saturday, January 22nd, I, Misty Eyes, will be joining My Hollywood Pride as part of the entertainment lineup for Drag Queen Storytime for the children and as well as Drag Queen Talk and Question and Answer for the teens. Find out more about the inaugural event with the special interview. Watch this. Well, there's Wilton Manors. There's Fort Lauderdale. Then there's Miami South Beach. But are we at the beginning of something new? Then it got me thinking about a classic movie I love. The ending, you know, watch this. Welcome to Hollywood. What's your dream? Everybody comes here. This is Hollywood, land of dreams. Some dreams come true, some don't. But keep on dreaming. This is Hollywood, always time to dream. So keep on dreaming. Wait, was that Jameer? <laughs> <laughs> Hollywood, yes, the real Hollywood is what we're talking about. You know, in South Florida, the city has come a long way for queer people and LGBTQ plus representation. Just five years ago, the human rights campaign, HRC, gave the city a disappointing 49 out of 100 city equality rating. Well, this Saturday, January 22nd, will be the first ever LGBTQ Pride Festival called My Hollywood Pride. And Hollywood will also celebrate its brand new 2021 100% rating. Doesn't that sound amazing? The street festival is full of main stage entertainment, vendors, and Pride celebrations. And you. And let's face it, who doesn't like a good virgin experience? And we just may have it in My Hollywood Pride. Joining us from the Hollywood LGBTQ Plus Council are board members Jeff Oliverio and Jameer Baptiste. Welcome, gentlemen. 
Welcome. Thank Thanks you for having, having us. us. Really exciting. I have never been to a Pride event. I've been to hundreds <laughs> of Pride events. I've never been to the first ever Pride event. How exciting is that for you and Hollywood? Um, well, I think it's a, a, as the clip just referenced, um, it's a dream in the making. Um, when we started the Hollywood LGBTQ Council just a few years ago, uh, one of the first things people said to us is, when are you going to do a Pride? And we thought, oh, well, you know, we're not ready for that. It's a big, a big undertaking. And then COVID happened, of course, so that, you know, kind of separated our community. So this is not just a Pride, but it's a, it's a getting our community back together um, after we've been separated for so long. Yeah, we always joke. Um, Wilton Manners, you ever heard of that? Um, I'm not too familiar. Yeah, I've been there once. We always joke here at uh, Happening Out and Queer News Tonight that it's the gayest place on planet Earth, and I only have to look to my right to know that that's true. <laughs> uh, and then we got Miami South Beach. Hollywood sits kind of in no man's land. How, how is it in terms of Hollywood stepping up and saying, oh, wait, hold on here, there's another big emerging uh, LGBT gayberhood uh, here in South Florida. How does that feel in terms of where Hollywood sits? And what's interesting is that no man's land is in between Miami Beach and Wilton Manor. So now you have a center location that you can come to that's accepting to our community. So how great is that, right? Uh, absolutely. You know, I hadn't thought about it that way. Uh, we could do a progressive party. Those are lots of fun. We'll mm -hmm. start early in Wilton Manors because we're a little older here in Wilton Manors. <laughs> and then we'll go to Hollywood and we'll finish till 4 a.m. Oh, wait, not anymore. But <laughs> in Miami South Beach. Yeah, that's right? interesting. Let's talk about the HRC uh, situation. Five years ago, the council, the Hollywood, LGBT Hollywood Council started five years ago? What? No, actually in 2019. Oh, oh yeah. really? Recently. Uh, yeah. Ago. yeah so, Only three years ago. So HRC did its first rating on Hollywood and... Uh, for those that uh, don't know, 49 is, is not the, the best rating. However, we have to say there are communities uh, around the country that get even a lower rating. Than Absolutely. 49. And uh, we sat in the fall and waited on you and waited on you. I kept pestering Jeff, what's the rating? What's the rating? <laughs> and then we were all just blown over. It came out 100% rating. That's amazing. What what was the city's reaction, your leadership, your business community? What was the reaction in Hollywood? Well, you know, I think from the city's standpoint, when we elevated that we got that score, um, it was just as much of a shock to them as it was to, that, that, that they got that the score was a 49. Um, and they actually just, you know, a lot of it was just kind of language and trying to, you know, coach them on ways that we can improve the score. And then some of them were bigger things, of course, like, you know, providing, you know, non-discrimination protections in some of the language for um, policies that the city has put in place. Um, one of them was, you know, working with vendors um, that the city uses. I mean, so these are important things. And although, you know, the county supersedes a lot of these, it's important to show that that language is there for people that live in our city and to know that, you know, and it includes, you know, not just LGBTQ people, even women as a protection was not in some of the language. You know, a lot of people don't realize the HRC um, municipality index is so incredibly important because uh, you, Hollywood's in the heart of uh, the largest LGBTQ travel destination on the entire planet. Um, uh, Fort Lauderdale, uh, visit Fort Lauderdale and Miami-Dade uh, Visitors, uh, Convention and Visitors Bureau, along with our two ports, we're the number one destination for LGBT uh, tourism in the entire world. And Hollywood sits right in the heart of it. And when people are making decisions of where they're going to go, the HRC index is often one of the main principal decision makers of the uh, embracement of mm -hmm. the community. Now Hollywood's going to be right there uh, uh, in the same breath as Wilton Manors, Fort Lauderdale, and South Beach. That's just amazing uh, in terms of the representation that says for our community. Yeah, and what was so cool about the whole experience is that Hollywood was on board. The government of Hollywood was on board with this whole process, so it made it seamless and easy to actually get to that 100 score. Yeah. You know, the, and uh, JB, you're you're right. The city has done a lot for the council since we launched. Um, you know, we they first started with you know we were the first city in Florida to raise the Progress Pride flag um, two years ago, and that was very exciting. Um, the first year that we founded, they create they did a Pride proclamation, which the city had never had. So all of these firsts have come fast and furious, and the city has been behind every one of them and it's been it's been fantastic yeah, including hope, this pride event I they're all behind us your uh, mayor and your city council and your chamber of commerce watches this episode of uh 
queer news tonight because the entire LGBTQ community is really celebrating the entire, saluting the entire community of Hollywood. You know, I make the joke uh, when I'm introducing you uh, that I've never uh, uh, participated in a virgin <laughs> hobby, uh, you know, a virgin pride event. Uh, of course, I make the joke. But one of the things that is interesting to me that I have never seen before, um, uh, we've been pretty careful of not saying Hollywood pride, Hollywood pride. We have followed your initiative of my Hollywood pride. I've never seen any pride celebration in the country do that before. What was the decision making that went in to adding the my to your title? I think, JB, you, you, you were part of that conversation originally, and it just, it just highlighted the uniqueness that Hollywood is, is that everyone kind of chooses their own adventure at this Pride. Um, if you're coming for you know, art and culture, we have an amazing art and culture installation with the Stonewall Museum and the World Age Museum, and we have films at Cinema Paradiso if you want to see LGBTQ-themed films. We have amazing entertainment if you want entertainment. We have an amazing choice of food vendors from either in the festival and our downtown restaurant. So we want to highlight them. And then we have this, what we think is the most unique part of the event is the kids and youth zone. Um, that's going to be manned by both SunServe, Pride Lines, and Big Brothers and Big Sisters Pride. So, so it was really a branding aspect of just having it a all-encompassing event where everybody feels they're part of it. So once you say it, my Hollywood pride, it belongs to you mm -hmm. and how you feel and how you want to explore that pride. Being that Hollywood hasn't been the destination for the LGBT community, now it becomes part of you by adding that my in there. Yeah, and I honestly, I think y'all hit, uh, uh, hit a home run with the incorporation of my because it personalizes it exactly. very much. Um, okay, well, we're going to have a street festival mm -hmm. and this is the first time you've done it. So, um, uh, tell us a little bit about that. None of us have been before, so we don't know, oh, this is what they do, this is where this is, this is where that does, you know, et cetera and so on. Uh, walk us through. How does the festival work? Starts at 1 o'clock. Starts uh, at 1 o'clock. Yeah, and... 12.45 uh, for a flag raising. Yeah, flag yes. raising uh, in the and city. And so Jeff and I have been there in our heads a million yes. times. Yes. <laughs> Walking through. I'm going to pull that out of your head. So what? Did, Tell us so we could what's just, going to happen. Yes. Yeah, so it's, it's amazing. It starts at 1 p.m. It's a boatload of fun, different activities that you can enjoy. We have um, the main stage packed throughout the whole event from 1 to midnight. And then we have an after party with Karma Lounge that's there on Hollywood. And what's great about everything that we have available is within walking distance of our street festival. Mm -hmm. On Hollywood Boulevard. On mm -hmm. Hollywood Boulevard yeah, in the downtown area. Yeah. So it's just packed with so much fun and engaging activities. Like Jeff mentioned, we have the Kids Zone, which is amazing. From one to five, we have the younger kids with face painting, free ice cream. <laughs> I'm going to take advantage of that. <laughs> I'd be like, I'm a yeah, sick. Yeah, Jameer, I believe you. Yeah, right. But yeah, just free ice cream, face painting, so much great activities. And then from five to nine will be for the teen zone where they'll have like a mixology station where they can make mocktails and things like that. And it's just a great experience for our youth as well as the adults where we have the main stage, the DJ West stage as well. You have and vendors. So much. Uh, so yes, vendor tent. we have a vendor tents, lots exhibitors, food. lots of food. What's great about um, the Hollywood downtown area is that we're surrounded by restaurants. Yeah. So not only did we bring in food vendors, but you can actually visit and take advantage of the restaurants that are right there on Hollywood. Yeah, excellent. And uh, one of the other things that I thought was very interesting is uh, often in Florida, and certainly here in South Florida, our prides uh, can be at a time uh, of the year when it's a little warmer. Uh, you seem to be in January. That seems to be a sound structural decision <laughs> to have the first My Hollywood We're, Pride. Yeah, we, we kind of we kind of saw it as like the uh, Pride half birthday. You know, like <laughs> instead of having it in June, we have it in January. Yeah. Um, there is no counter programming. And one of the things is, again, we have so many amazing Pride festivals here. We weren't trying to compete with those festivals. Yeah, and we weren't trying to compete with any of the events. We wanted to have yeah. our own event yeah. um, and make it It's special. very interesting. Uh, Faye Watt uh, did her show um, uh, this week, and uh, there was a conversation about, can you have too many prides? And it was a universal, <clears throat> no. 
uh, representation changes and evolves, and with those changes and the evolution of prides, different uh, organizations in different cities bring different things, and that improves our representation in the community. It made perfect sense to me. Let's talk about uh, what you've already said. Impressive lineup for first year of entertainment. You have main and satellite stages, so there's lots of stuff going on all the time on Hollywood Boulevard. Let me just do a first uh, kind of quick run through. Miss Florida at large, Velvet Lenore is the principal host. Uh, she is the uh, reigning Miss Florida. Uh, she is hilarious. Uh, Daisy Dead Petals. Who's that? I, I <laughs> Daisy, just an icon in our community. Around the way, girl. Right. right? Uh, we're looking forward to seeing Daisy and uh, Rihanna Patron. Uh, multiple DJs, including Tony Duncan and Ryan uh, Morales. Uh, Miss Florida's uh, Melanie uh, Monroe. Uh, you have singer-songwriters, which I think is interesting. Uh, singer-songwriter, and it's pronounced Kiowa. Yes. The all one, mm -hmm. right? Okay, and Joey Young, uh, Cadillac Davenport. Uh, you have a Pat Benatar tribute <laughs> band, Midnight Angel. Tell me what the the decision making was to have a, a, a Pat Benatar. Uh, band at a pride festival. Well, again, I think it goes back to what JV said is that this is a pride for everyone. So we didn't want the programming to be, you know, for just one audience. And we wanted to have a diverse mix of Wait, both. Are you criticizing my disco, Jeff? <laughs> no, I mean, listen, I, I, I think everyone should, you know, should, should listen to the music they love, but also the representation of what people will want to attend and listen to. Um, and having live music, like actual live performers we thought was a really key component. Hollywood is known for having live musical acts in the downtown, and so we wanted to reflect that. Yeah. Yes, and, and we really have to give a nod to our entertainment director, Francesca, for pulling all these great diverse acts together to yes. complete a beautiful yeah. and fun and energetic Lots of diversity day. for a day festival for mm -hmm. Pride, for sure. And of course, I love this. I met her yesterday. Uh, you have a headliner concert. I remembered her from NBC's uh, The Voice, uh, the live show Top 16 contestant, uh, Karina Iglesias. And uh, what a great representation she is in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, she told me yesterday um, uh, for one of the things that we're doing in promoting her concert uh, that uh, she has gotten back to uh, songwriting and uh, she has written a special song and she's going to debut it at Hollywood Pride. Uh, is a uh, combination uh, collaboration with Tracy Young, uh, the, uh, the Grammy Award uh, winner uh, for Madonna fame. Uh, tell us about Karina and, and having a headline act. What uh, what was the process there? First and foremost, I would like to say, look out Stonewall and Miami Beach. <laughs> Good job. All right. Now you're gay. <laughs> They're dropping the mic on, it's, it's on your amazing. big brothers. Okay. <laughs> no, but we enjoy all the prides, but it's just so amazing to have have something so unique we have so many unique experiences in this pride and to add Karina Iglesias mm -hmm. to it who was on the voice and now re-energized to do what she loves and have this special tribute to my Hollywood pride just is overwhelming and we're just humbled by it and we can't wait to hear it, but yeah. just to have her, you know, because she's been away from music for a little bit. Not saying that she's been in the background, but hasn't really um, set that tone. And now she's coming back hard with mm -hmm. a single that is partnered with a Grammy Award winner, yeah, you know, Tracy right. Young. And that's she has amazing. that awesome voice. She's, and and awesome. the connection that every one of these performers are is that they're all from South Florida, yeah. which is also, I think, very unique for a Pride where, you know, we typically do bring in headliners that don't have a connection to the local community. They're just, you know, they're famous, but they don't have a local connection. These per performers all perform here locally and live here locally, which yeah. I think is also a different a difference in the entertainment. We are very proud. Uh, we're uh, one of the presenting sponsors for My Hollywood Pride, Hot yes, Spots Magazine you. and Happening Out Television Network. And I uh, see uh, Faye Watts, a uh, partner in crime, her bed partner in crime, uh, Damien uh, Lenore, uh, is going to be performing also. There's a picture of Damien. He's yeah, <laughs> leave that one up for a second. Damn boy, that, I, I really just don't like ugly. <laughs> I just don't. I, he's so ugly. But he's a great personality. He's got great personality. Yes, he does. Uh, so Damien's going to be on the stage. Stage, that's going to be a lot of fun. Tell us uh, a little bit about, uh, it must be expensive to do something like this. Uh, 
it <sighs> yep. takes a lot of money. People go, oh, I'm just going to show up. And yeah. the barricades went up at no cost. <laughs> yeah, if, if I have bags under my eyes for the interview, it's because this past week has been a little draining and it still continues to be right now. But um, first and foremost, we could not do Pry without sponsors. So yes. first, you know, of course, we're here. It's happening out. And and hotspots for being a presenting sponsor. We have we're lucky to have one of our um, leading healthcare organizations in the community, AHF, um, as a presenting sponsor. They're going to be on site doing mobile testing, which we really love. Um, so they're going to be there. Um, we have community support from the Hollywood Historical Society, which is also a very unique uh, Pride sponsor. That is a very unusual sponsor for for a, a like organization for a Pride event. I'd love to see that. Yeah, it's, I mean Hollywood has a rich history. It's one of the oldest cities in in the state of Florida it has a very long history and you know, when Joseph Young founded the city so the Hollywood Historical Society is actually going to have a installation in their booth to about some Hollywood history so I think stop by and check that out um, we also you know we're fortunate to have the Hollywood CRA um, help us put this pride event on to help support the local businesses so one of the things that was very key to this was having this interaction with local businesses we even have one of the uh, main bars in downtown Hollywood Mickey Burns Irish pub um, that's on our pride committee which is a um which is an irish pub he is like the key center account in the middle of this of this pride festival he's doing an activation i was there last night his staff is like making they're making having shirts made that say pride staff i mean they're going all out they're nice. so excited nice. so that, excited and that again just speaks to how much hollywood has embraced this experience you know out of the four um, presenting sponsors that we have, two of them are part of Hollywood's community. So it's amazing to have that support from them. And it just shows how much they're committed to this process. Well, it sounds like a blast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I can't wait to be there. Uh, you're, uh, you're doing a, a fundraiser with the HRC uh, mm -hmm. that is going to begin uh, at Schwa. And that mm -hmm. starts at like 11 o'clock. 11 a.m. 11 a.m. And help uh, the HRC and my Hollywood pride and the uh, LGBTQ uh, Council in Hollywood. Uh, final thoughts. It sounds like a, just a blast. Uh, and and uh, on January 22nd, when the weather is perfect, it is a not miss. What in the world are you going to do on Saturday? <laughs> oh, I'm going to go to Hollywood Pride or I'm going to mow the lawn. Right. No, 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 yeah. We're choosing to go to the Hollywood Pride. I'm curious to both of you, uh, last thoughts. Uh, Monday, you never get a first ever again. This is the first time ever. Uh, you're going to see all of these people celebrate uh, our community, my community, uh, in the way that they're going to celebrate Monday morning when it's all done and you've had a day to rest. Uh, what, do you, what do you expect you're going to say about my Hollywood pride? What do you think you're going to say? Monday morning. Well, I've thought about this a lot, and I think what I would like to see if it's a successful event is that people come and experience Hollywood that have never seen our community before, that we show, we put on a good show for them, and that we have people that say, wow, I didn't realize all of this was in Hollywood, and I want to come back. And that's really the idea of this. It's to bring community to us, because we, we don't have a center of the LGBTQ community like a Wilton Manors does, or even a South Beach does. This is to bring people together to let them know we're here. Yeah. And that's, and that's what yeah. this is about. And Monday morning for you, Jameer? And to add to that, you know, just to have the locals and the residents of Hollywood actually take away from the experience as well. Like, this is what the LGBT community has to offer mm -hmm. or is about. If we can just have one person learn our history, like what we have with our Pride Cultural um, event, um, hub that we're having, the Pride Cultural Hub with the World AIDS Museum and Stonewall Museum, where you could go on a tour throughout the whole um, festival from 1 to 9 p.m. Just to have people experience what the LGBT community mm -hmm. is about that hasn't before will be amazing as well. You know, other than just feeling relieved that we achieved this, you know, our <laughs> first virginal um, Pride, other than that, to know that people are actually going to enjoy it for multiple reasons, whether it's the entertainment, whether it's the education, whether it's the location, it's just so humbling, and I'm super excited. You to know, have that uh, you're both heard loud and clear. It's it's very interesting to me having so many prides uh, under my belt all over the country and really all over the world. Um, it's very very unusual to hear so much local origination in your conversation about a Pride event. That is wonderful because 
by the way, that's exactly how they start. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. And, and I think you have a unique opportunity to see something that you haven't seen before the first time. And if you miss Saturday, January 22nd, it's never coming around again <laughs> as the first time. It's going to roar back in uh, 2023, but you want to be there uh, this Saturday. Gentlemen, thank you very much. We're, I'm so excited to come and see this uh, and, and participate. And I know our entire uh, South Florida community is excited. And just like we started the video at the top, uh, Hollywood is where dreams come true. That's right. Come true. Everybody comes to Hollywood. Everybody we'll see you. Everybody comes Hollywood. to Hollywood. At, at least Hollywood this Pride. Saturday. Yeah, we're going to be on the saying. stage doing it. We'll see you there. Hollywood. <laughs>